Hello and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to do a quick last minute revision for IGCSE chemistry. And this is going to help you to revise some important concepts before your paper 2 exam. If you want a longer revision video for paper 2 chemistry, make sure to watch this video, which is linked in the description. And it's going to be really helpful for you, inshallah. So these are some common um, concepts that you need to know. Make sure that you don't confuse any of them, okay? So atom is basically the smallest particle of an element that can exist. For example, when you have the periodic table, each of those, these are different atoms, okay? Hydrogen, oxygen, and so on. What about molecule? A molecule could be basically two or more atoms which are chemically combined together. For example, you can have an oxygen molecule. Oxygen does not exist in nature as oxygen atoms. It exists as a diatomic molecule because two oxygen molecules, two oxygen atoms are basically chemically combined together by covalent bond. What is an ion? When an uh, ion is basically when an atom or a molecule uh, loses or gains electrons and it carries an electronic charge. For example, if you have um, hydrogen gas, okay, this hydrogen loses each of this atom loses an electron to become a po uh, to become positive ions okay you get two two of these now this is for metals for non-metals they gain um electrons so o will gain o would um actually gain two electrons and become negative two by doing this they are actually uh gaining the configuration of the noble gas okay an isotope is basically different atoms of the same element okay it could be oxygen hydrogen whatever but they, they have the same number of protons but they have different number of neutrons so their mass number is different okay uh two isotopes of the same element remember they have same chemical properties because they have same number of electrons and they also have the same electronic configuration only it's the mass number that's different okay one more important concept that you can review here is that what um pro you have protons neutrons and electrons okay proton number is important because that is characteristic for each for example the proton number of hydrogen is same it's one proton number of helium is two when you change the proton number you're basically changing the type of what about neutron number when you change the neutron number you are getting different isotope okay what about the electron if you're changing the electron you're getting ions if you're losing electrons you're getting positive ions if you're gaining electrons you're getting a negative ion and if elements have same electron number they have same chemical properties moving on so this is how you can donate an atom and a is the mass number or nucleon number and this consists of the number of protons and the number of neutrons what is z z is a proton number or the atom number if you want to find the neutron number you have to basically subtract a and z the mass number and the proton number so you can get the number of neutrons atomic structure and bonding so for IGCSC, you need to know the electronic configurations of el of element from proton numbers 1 to 20. And uh, you can have the first shell has has 2, the second shell has carries 8 and 8, and the last shell carries 2 maximum. So if asked, which of them is unreactive? This one is unreactive. These two can still react. For example, the last one can gain an electron to, to become 2 and have a full shell. And this one will also gain three electrons to have full electron shell. So only the second one is unreactive. Remember, you have three types of bondings, ionic, covalent, and metallic. Ionic is only between a metal and a non-metal. Metal loses electrons and the non-metal gains it. And that's how uh, the transfer of ions occur. Covalent occurs between two non-metals and that is between sharing of electrons. For example, if you have um, oxygen and oxygen, they're going to share their cell, uh, their electron shells and uh, get eight each, okay? And then you have metallic. This is this happens only for metal, obviously. This is you have um, a lattice of positive ions and, and uh, which is like this. And this is surrounded by a sea of delocalized or free electrons. And because of these free electrons, remember, metals can conduct electricity. Now, um, what is a pure substance? A pure substance has fixed melting and boiling point. If a substance is impure, the melting point will reduce and the boiling point will increase if it's impure, okay? So if you want to find out if the substance is pure, it will have a fixed melting and boiling point. And in chromatography, it's only going, if you perform chromatography of that um, substance, it will only form one spot. So there are different types to, um, different ways to separate. 
you have filtration, crystallization, distillation, chromatography. If, if you want to know these steps in detail, I have linked it in my paper 6 revision video, which is linked in the description. You can uh, have a look. Now, spot height represents solubility, so I can just explain that quickly. If you carry out chromatography, and then you're going to keep this in a solvent, right? So as the solvent moves up the, uh, this chromatogram, uh, this spot is going to separate. If it travels a smaller di uh, distance, that means it has smaller, less solubility in that solvent. If it travels a greater distance, it means it has a greater solubility in that solvent. Sometimes if it does not separate at all, that means this one, this substance is not soluble in that solvent. So you can change the solvent and then you will see it will separate. Some reactions with acids are acid and base is a neutralization reaction and this will give you salt plus water. For example, if you have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, you will get sodium chloride and water. If you have acid and a carbonate, salt, water and carbon dioxide. Remember, metallic oxides are basic, whereas non-metallic oxides are acidic. Let's give me you an example. For example, if you have Na2O, MgO, these are metallic oxide, right? So these are basic. These can react with, with acid. On the other hand, these are only some reactions, okay? Not all. Not metallic oxides are acidic. For example, you have sulfur dioxide, you have carbon dioxide. These are acidic oxides. What is redox? Redox is basically reduction and oxidation. Remember, reduction is loss of oxygen and oxidation is gain. This one, oxidation is gain of oxygen. So you can remember this. There's also another uh, concept regarding redox that is oil rig. So oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. Oil rig. It's uh, for example, if you have mg chlorine gas and you're getting mg cl2 so which one is being oxidized and reduced magnesium was initially zero and then here it's plus two it's becoming an ion so obviously oxidation is sorry magnesium is losing electrons it's considered oxidation oxidation is loss of electron on the other hand chlorine was zero and it's becoming negative gaining electron therefore it's reduction okay next move on to moles if you want a complete video on moles i have made one which you can refer to and i have discussed the past papers as well okay so with moles you can uh, you can apply the formula now sometimes you can also find moles by uh, if you have by doing a mole ratio so when you're doing that make sure that you're always balancing the equation before carrying out the ratio if it's not balanced it's not going to give you correct answer then you have percentage composition to find the percentage composition of for example Find the percentage composition of carbon in Na2CO3, for example. You're going to write down the mass of element. So here it's going to be 12 divided by the mass of the entire substance. So using the periodic table, we'll find the MR of this uh, substance. And then divide it, multiply by 100 to find the percentage composition of carbon in uh, sodium carbonate. Moving on, you need to find the empirical formula. For example, if they tell you a substance have 60% carbon and 40% hydrogen, find the empirical formula. So the first step is you're going to find moles. So carbon and hydrogen, this is going to be 60 and 40 mass divided by MR, divide by 12, divide by 1. And then you will get some number. And then you have to make sure that they're whole number, that they're not decimal points. For example, if you get 2.5, 2.5 and 2 let's say you're going to multiply both of them by 2 to get 5 and 2 and then it will give you C5H2 obviously this is just this is not uh, this is some random numbers so uh, you will use their numbers all right now so we have, we have exothermic and endothermic reaction just how the name states exothermic reaction release heat to the surrounding while endothermic reaction takes heat from the surroundings into the system so can you identify if you increase the temperature which of them is going to be favored and if you reduce the temperature which of them is going to be favored if you increase the temperature this is going to move in the direction that is going to oppose the change so if the temperature is increasing endothermic reaction will occur so it takes the heat from the surrounding and what about if you reduce the temperature? If you reduce the temperature, that means there is less heat in the surrounding. So exothermic reaction will occur, which is the forward reaction, and that is going to release heat to the surrounding. Remember, if you increase the temperature, if you increase the surface area and concentration, 
and if you have a catalyst remember catalyst reduces the activation energy all of these changes are going to increase the rate of reaction what is electrolysis electrolysis is breakdown of molecules by electricity so um when you have um you can have cations and anions now it can be confusing to to remember which of them is positive and which one is negative so you can remember since cats are positive cations are positive ions for example na plus mg plus and then plus two anions is obviously negative ion so this is going to be cl minus and so on and then another trick to remember is pancake uh, p is for positive and n is for um anode it attracts anions which are the negative ions on the other hand nca negative which is cathode cathode is negative so and it attracts cations which are positive ions okay so this is going to help you remember that to be able to answer questions you need to memorize these reactivity series remember for anions you're going to choose um, the anions towards the left side for example if you have hydroxide ion and nitrate ion is the hydroxide ion which is going to be favored in the electrode on the other hand you have a reactivity series as you go as you're going down um the reactivity is reducing and these ones uh, the the ones that is at the bottom is going to be more more like most likely to be favored at the cathode so for example if you have copper and carbon it's copper that's going to be favored at the electrode so moving on we can move on to periodic table okay remember you have seven groups right so each group represents the number of valence electrons so for example if it's in group one that means the, the final shell the valence shell has one electron if you have seven that means the, the valence shell has seven electrons eight is for noble gas remember noble gases have attained full electronic configuration and they do not react okay and they exist as monatomic single atoms n-e-a-r okay on the other side if you move across this these are your periods and your periods represent number of shells all the elements in this row have three three shells okay now these are some these are some important concepts that are going to show up a lot in paper too as you go down the group the atoms get larger in size why because if you look at here the valence electron is same you have one because you're in group one but the number of shells is going to increase right so each element has one extra electron shell as you're going down the outer electron is going to be further away from the nucleus and you can see that radius has increased so the size uh, the atom has gotten bigger as you move across a period you can see that the electron shell remains same because this is one period let's say if it's two so you'll have two shells but since you're moving acro across the group number is changing that means the number of valence electron increases number of protons increase so you have a greater positive charge and you and the number of electrons are added to the same shell so as you're moving across the nuclear charge is increasing and the number of electrons are increasing as well but this increased nuclear charge is going to pull the electrons closer to it therefore the size shrinks as you're moving across the period let's see what happens to the melting point as you're moving across the period so first you have uh, over here you have metals right metals have strong metallic bonds therefore they have high melting point as you're moving across for example let's say you read silicon they form um, giant covalent structures they have very high melting point as you move uh, further towards right you move to non-metals right non-metals form simple uh, molecules uh, for and they have covalent bonds they have weak intermolecular forces and they have low melting points as well and then uh, towards group eight the noble gases have the lowest melting point now these are some important reactions so remember group one plus metal forms metal hydroxide and water Group 1 metals react with water to give you metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. Let's look at this. Lithium plus water gave you lithium hydroxide and, and hydrogen gas. As you're going down, the outer electron is further away from the nucleus, right? As you're going down, the period number is increasing, and that means the number of shells have increased. The outer electron is further away from the nucleus, and it's easy to lose. Attraction between the nucleus and electron is uh, less, therefore it's much easier to lose this electron that's why reactivity increases it can easily lose that electron and become positive on the other hand for halogens for group 7 reactivity decreases down the group therefore if you know for displacement reaction chlorine is on top it can easily replace bromine 
and form potassium chloride and bromine gas. Remember, bromine is brown, right? Brown liquid. So the color change would be from colorless to brown. Let's see why does the reactivity reduces as you go down the group. Remember, halogens have uh, seven electrons in their valence shell. So as you're going down, the period increases. That means the number of shells have increased. And the outer shell, this one, is further away from the nucleus. So if an electron is coming, there's going to be a weaker attraction between this positive from the nucleus and the incoming electron. So there's going to be a weak attraction. Whereas it, over here, when you only have two shells, that means you're in the second period, it's easier to gain an electron and it's more reactive. That's why as you're going down, the reactivity reduces. And that's all for this video.